What up, homies? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Talk Tuesday. Going up on the Tuesday. Going up. Lay down. Sorry that my videos are always like a zoo, but hopefully you guys like the animal showcase we have every day. Before I get started, I did want to let you guys know that next Tuesday, Talk Tuesday, will be live at 6 p.m. MST right here on my channel. If you come, you can come chat, hang out, we can talk about whatever you guys want. Yes, Talk Tuesday, we are here, and I'm so excited about this video because it's a super interesting topic that I have not seen really anyone talk about, and it's also really surprising how little it's been covered in the media, just in the news. And I feel like a lot of people haven't heard the full story, even if they know of it. So I thought it would be a good idea and I've had it requested quite a few times to talk about Otto Warm Beer. So this happened really recently and it's still a very fresh wound. It's a very sad story and if you have not heard of Otto, Otto actually was a tourist who went on a kind of, let's not dig, let's not dig right now. Otto actually was a tourist who went on a very daring trip to North Korea, which is really rare. It's very hard to go to North Korea. I'm sure most of you know that North Korea is a forbidden country. We obviously have a lot of hostility with them. North Korea shelters and censors their people extremely. <laughs> not allowed to bring anything into North Korea. You can't bring a cell phone, can't bring a computer, can't bring any printed material, any music. In fact, they don't want you to bring any type of camera in that is too sophisticated. No telephoto lenses, nothing. You realize they've gotten so much bad press for not having food that they want to show, oh, there's plenty of food. Food everywhere. They force you to sit there and watch this sort of indoctrination video about how the American imperialists are terrible and they're shitting on the peace-loving people of North Korea. Really incredibly anti-American. Occasionally, the North Koreans will allow Americans to come in. It's very, like, they're very choosy about how, who comes in and stuff. And if it's any type of media, they control what you see. You only see what they want you to see. They want you to think in Pyongyang, which is the capital there, that everyone's happy there and kids are just so happy to be there. Worship their great leader. <laughs> I mean, there's extreme homelessness and poverty all over the country, most of the people there. But when Americans come or any other country comes and tries to film it for journalistic reasons, they normally fake things. And I was watching this documentary where they literally faked Google searching. They showed this group of North Koreans on computers at like a school or a library or something. All of the people in this room in this like computer lab that they were showing on the video were just staring at the Google home screen. Next, they took us to a computer lab where students were using the internet. And your first thought is, okay, this looks like any lab at a university back home. But then it dawns on you that it's completely silent. No one is doing anything. There was no typing, no mouse clicking, nothing. We saw one guy looking at the Google homepage, but he wasn't searching for anything. He was just staring blankly at the screen. The one person we saw there who actually looked like he knew how to use a computer was, of course, the one person they wanted us to meet. This stop was clearly designed to convince us that they had access to the internet, just like the rest of the world, which we knew wasn't true. It felt like we were walking through a real live Truman show. For some reason, that just really opened my eyes to how censored these people are, how, um, 
warped their reality is. Anyway, our story is about Otto, who actually went to North Korea as a tourist and unfortunately was taken prisoner. And just this month, he died because he was in a coma when they finally returned him to the US. So I'm just gonna tell you guys the whole story from the beginning because I think Otto's story needs to be known. I'm disappointed with the lack of coverage on it. I just feel like a lot of people don't know about it. So me and Otto are about a year apart in age. He was born on December 12th of 1994. His parents are named Fred and Cindy and they had two other children as well, Austin and Greta. And they grew up in Cincinnati in a pretty nice area and Otto was like an amazing guy. He graduated high school in 2013 from Wyoming High School. From from my research, this kid was extremely smart, did very well on testing, and had some of the highest scores, best grades, like in the school. Todd Seiler was Otto's favorite teacher. I thought he was putting me on the first month of class. I thought this guy, he's so enthusiastic, he really he can't be this excited about U.S. history. But Otto was a thinker. He was prom king, he was an athlete, he did just about everything, was friends with everybody, he gave a speech at graduation. As we prepare to leave Wyoming High School, it feels like saying goodbye to a close friend. In a literal sense, it is. Many of us will move far away and not come back for a long time. No matter where we go or what we do though, we will always have this group here. We'll have the knowledge we gained as a group, and we'll have to make reruns. The memories we've created to be played over and over again. Not only that, but he also played football. He was just very well known in his area. And the cool thing about Otto is he definitely wasn't like full of himself. Like he like wore stuff from thrift stores. This stuff would have been bought at a thrift store. He loved that. He's and got a taste for zany shirts, I know. He does. And, uh, and he looked good in them. He like loved to dress up wacky and make people laugh. Like he was a really down to earth, good, solid guy. And I think maybe that's why this story has just rocked me so much is that I don't know I feel like I would want to be friends with this guy it's like the saddest thing and Otto was actually enrolled at the University of Virginia and he actually was double majoring in commerce and economics he also was very interested in international studies he actually had a minor in global sustainability and he loved to travel he had been to quite a few countries already and he was really daring his friends said he wasn't afraid of anything Otto actually decided and signed up to go on a trip to North Korea, which to most of us seems absolutely crazy. And Otto lived his life like that. And he went with this tour group called Young Pioneer Tours. And this tour group totally advertised their tours as, you know, this is the trip your parents don't want you to take. This is the wild one that most people will never do. They actually have a YouTube channel and I'll put in some clips here. Hi guys, I'm Rowan. I'm a tour manager at Young Pioneer Tours. So guys, this is the, the mail center and uh, this is where you come to uh, send postcards back to your friends and family. Yeah. You having fun tonight? Sweet. Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All of you tourists would directly witness, hear, and experience real looks of Songun Korea and cherish impressive memories of them. They really, really play up North Korea. The hotel that they'll stand is really awesome, and all the things that you do, and it's really fun, and you're gonna have a great, fun time. Right now, we're at the Yanggakdo International Hotel. We're in the lobby. And in here, we have the supermarket where you can stock up on water, more beer, coffee, uh, Korean lollies. The two lanes have been recently renovated with uh, new balls, new equipment. So inside here, we have a bar. Yeah! No photo! Okay. No. 25 meter lap pool. It's heated. Fantastic during summer. And here we have uh, the washing room. Sauna with freezing compartment. No idea. You probably can't see me now. And then we finally have the sauna. All right, let's go. Now North Korea is dangerous. It's scary. They hate Americans over there. They like there's literally posters. They sing songs about hating Americans. And you know it's not the people's fault. They're they're told to be like this. They're actually the fourth biggest military in the world. If you didn't know that. But like I said, Otto wasn't scared because he was fearless and he didn't go with any like close friends or anything. There were ten other Americans in the tour group, I believe. But he was pretty much just on his own. And so the tour that. Otto decided to do was a five day tour around New Year's Eve and they took them to a couple different places and like I said Pyongyang is really really built up it's really nice pretty much all the country's money goes there so they have this super super nice hotel there hotels literally on an island so that tourists like they can keep a better watch of them like pretty much if you're an American you go to North Korea you stay at that hotel now the weird thing about this hotel is that they have a fifth floor that guests are not allowed to go to we were kind of given full reign of the hotel except for one floor. The elevator skipped 
floor number five. One, two, three, four, six, seven. No one really knows what the deal is with the fifth floor. Obviously, Otto, being this adventurous kid, wanted to go to the fifth floor, and tons of other people that have been in tours in North Korea actually have gone to the fifth floor. I found this whole other blogs back in 2011, so before this all happened, but she did a blog post and talked about going to the fifth floor. She has pictures and everything. Now, on this floor, from what I've seen, they have tons of anti-American uh, propaganda, like stuff about the great leader and the military and things like strange things that say death to all American. Mysterious fifth floor. What goes on here? Nobody I think it was kind of a common thing that these tour groups kind of did. Not them, obviously, not like the leaders of the tour group because they were like, do not go to the fifth floor. But students, I think it's kind of like something that a lot of them end up wanting to do. And so this was New Year's Eve. They had gone out, they were drinking, they were having this good time. There was this big festival in the city. They also had fireworks. So they had like a full New Year's Eve thing. New Year's Eve, 2015, Otto headed to Kim Il-sung Square for fireworks. That of Young Pioneer Tours shows us this scene in 2016 in a YouTube video. We're here in Kim Il-sung Square and uh, it's absolutely packed with people. Later that night after they've been drinking, actually I guess it would be the next day in the early morning hours, he, Otto, and a couple other people decided to go to the fifth floor. Now that's pretty ballsy. Um, maybe he didn't realize just how serious they were or just how serious North Korea is, but not only did Otto go to this floor, Otto actually stole something from it. There is this video footage that North Korea claims is Otto. So much of this is sketchy because obviously this is an R court system. They pretty much have the sketchiest court system in the world. So we don't know a lot of facts. We don't even know if this was for sure Otto that did this. We don't even know that because it's a super, super grainy video, but they claim that it is Otto pulling a poster off, a propaganda poster and trying to steal it. And that seems like not a big deal at all. Like here in America, you could go steal a poster from somewhere and probably not even get in trouble. But over in North Korea, that was a serious, serious crime. As the tour group was about to leave, they were literally at the airport about to go through security. Otto and another guy that he had met there were in line to go through security and as he was about to go on and most of his group had already been through security he was just at the end of the line the North Korean authorities literally took him from the line at the airport me and Otto were the last two through the security and he had to simply had to tap on the shoulder Danny Gratton was Otto's roommate during the trip two guards took him away and I sort of laughingly said to him, well, that's the last we'll ever see of you. And because we got on so well, Otto turned around and just chuckled at me. But reality was they would not see him again. Now, as the plane boarded, they expected him to eventually join them. Maybe it was some weird business or something, um, but he never did. And as they were gonna take off, they were like, what the hell, our friend is still there. And they were told that he was sick and he couldn't get on the plane. So they left without him. The reason this was a big deal is that Kim Jong-un was actually on the poster that Otto stole and taking something or defacing something or just wrecking any property that has his face on it is a serious, serious crime in North Korea. You cannot fold up the great leader. You cannot take the great leader off the wall. So North Korea has like a super ridiculous justice system. They do these like fake trials. They're pretty much fake. You get no representation, you get no defense. You basically have to confess to exactly what they said you did, even if you didn't do it, and say exactly what they want you to say. It was aired on TV, um, Otto's confession, and it's, I have to warn you, it's really, really upsetting. I mean, I've never seen someone look so upset and distressed. I can't even imagine what they had been doing to him before this, or how they got him to say this, because he said all these weird things like, I I'm, I'm, can't believe I was fooled by the American government. Um, just strange things like talking about how he was in a secret society and just all this stuff that really wasn't true. Um, his friends and family watched it and they're like, this was 100% just scripted. He had to say whatever he had to say.
my family. So you got to be Jesus and not Jesus. Give me the oldest son in my family. Um, and he begged them to let him go for his family's sake and everything. I think Kim Jong Un could not pass up on this great political opportunity because having an American hostage is huge power for them. They basically kept him as like a bargaining chip for other political things. And it's so crazy, but Otto was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. 21-year-old Otto Warmbier is sentenced to 15 years in prison, hard labor. The adventurous and curious college student who came to North Korea to have fun throwing snowballs with kids now in handcuffs, head down. Crazy, crazy sentence. I can't even imagine how his parents felt. In North Korea, they have all these labor camps and there's not even pictures of them because they're so secretive. And really the only way you can see them is on like Google Earth. They're like these huge camps. One of them is the size of New York City. One of them is three times the size of DC. We have no idea what goes on in there. It's interesting. They've had like different reports there because there's been American prisoners and stuff in there and some of them say like it wasn't too bad. Some of them said they were starving. People were eating frogs and rats and people are not fed. They're tortured, beaten, killed, just about everything. And they're doing like horrible labor, like digging holes and just like really hard manual labor, moving heavy things all day, 10 hours a day, six days a week. So that sentence started in January of 2016. And obviously the family's trying everything they can to get him back, working with the government, working with senators, trying to do anything. They were basically told to just stay quiet because you don't want to upset the North Koreans. And our government like really did nothing to help them get him back. So then this year, North Korea finally admitted that Otto was in a coma. No one knows how this happened. Specialists who've looked at him and looked at his brain afterwards think that this happened possibly weeks after his sentence, if not like right after. So uh, think about that. That was January of 2016. So over a year, they finally came forward and said he has a coma and admitted it. So we demanded that he would be released on humanitarian grounds and North Korea did on humanitarian grounds, which is just bullshit. If they really cared about him, they would have let him go way sooner, as soon as the coma started. But what we think now is that they decided to get rid of him finally because they didn't want him to die in North Korea and they thought he was pretty much about to die. So they said they were gonna set him free and that was in June of this year, so just a month ago. His parents and friends were really excited. I don't think they knew the severity of what happened to him. And like I said, we don't know what happened to him. He could have been beaten, he could have fallen, he could have had some type of disease. In fact, they don't think that it was any type of head trauma because his brain tissue was damaged over his whole head. In fact, they think like some type of lack of blood. So who really knows what happened to him and we'll probably never know. They finally let him come home. Here's some footage of him coming off the plane. As Otto's loved ones were anxiously awaiting his arrival. The horror of his maltreatment suddenly so real as he was brought off the plane, limp and unconscious. We were all very hopeful, no matter what people were saying. Um, so I don't think we really fully grasp how serious it was. Soon after they got him home and looked at the severity of the situation, they realized that there was no chance for him. And on June 19th of 2017, he was sadly taken off life support and passed away. It's just such a sad story because it was so, it's just such a sad story because it was so unnecessary. And this is someone who could have had a really good future, could have helped the world. So I guess I wanted to make this video almost in, in a cautionary way. Be careful. Um, if you see an opportunity to go to North Korea, maybe think twice. Traveling in general, be cautious of sketchy tour groups or dangerous situations, because things like this happen to tourists a lot. I'm someone who loves to travel. I love to see the world. I plan on traveling a lot more, but I will always be cautious about the tours that I go on and the types of people that are running them, because I just think this was a serious lack of responsibility. Like, yes, Otto should not have gone there, but like, is it safe to even bring people to North Korea if this kind of thing can happen in the first place. I don't know. I just wanted to talk about it because Otto's story needs to be told. I just wanted to say rest in peace to Otto and his family who've lost this amazing kid in a terrible, terrible way. But I thought you guys would find this story really interesting. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you did because I think I might do more stuff like this on current events. So let me know your opinions in the comments. I want to know what you think about the whole situation. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you next time.